Mm -hmm. for, for thousands of years, humans tended to view life as a drama of decision making. Like life is your journey, you reach an intersection after intersection, and you need to choose. Some decisions are small, like what to eat for breakfast, and some decisions are really big, like who, whom to marry. And all of, almost all of art and all of religion is about that. Like almost every, whether it's a Shakespeare tragedy or a Hollywood comedy, it's about the hero or heroine needing to make a big decision, to, to be or not to be, to marry X or to marry Y. And what does it mean to live in a world in which increasingly we rely on the recommendations of algorithms to make these decisions until we reach a point when we simply follow them all the time or most of the time? Hey everyone, this year I'm doing a series of public discussions on uh, the future of the internet and society and some of the big issues around that. And um, today I'm here with Yuval Noah Harari, uh, a, a great historian and uh, best-selling author of, of a number of books. Uh, his first book, Sapiens, A, a Brief History of Humankind, uh, kind of chronicled and did an analysis uh, going from the early days of hunter-gatherer society to now how our civilization is organized. And uh, your next two books, The uh, Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, uh, actually tackle important issues of technology uh, and the future. And, uh, and that's, uh, I think, a lot of what we'll talk about today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most historians... Um, you know, only t tackle and, and, um, and analyze the past. But, yeah. you know, but a lot of the work that you've done has had uh, really interesting um, insights and, and raised important questions for the future. So I'm really glad to have an opportunity to, to talk with you today. So Yuval, thank you for, for joining uh, for, for this conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I think that if historians and philosophers cannot engage with the current questions of technology and the future of humanity, then we aren't doing our jobs. A key question is how do you protect human attention from being hijacked by malevolent players who know you better than you know yourself, who know you better than your, your mother knows you? And this is a question that we never had to face before mm -hmm. because we never had, usually the malevolent players just didn't know me very well. If you can manipulate, if you can hijack people's attention and manipulate See, them, then people deciding on their own just doesn't help because I don't realize it, that somebody manipulated me to think that this is what I want. If, um, and, and we are reaching the point when for the first time in history you can do that on a massive scale. So again, I, I speak a lot about the issue of free will in, in this mm. regard. And the yeah. people that are easiest to manipulate are the people who believe in free will and who simply identify with whatever thought or desire pops up in their mind because they cannot even imagine that this desire is not the result of my free will, this desire is the result of some external manipulation. Now, it may sound paranoid, and for most of history it was probably paranoid because nobody had this kind of ability to do it on a, on a massive scale, but yeah. here, like in, in Silicon Valley, the tools to do that on a massive scale have been developed over the last few decades, and they may have been developed with the best intentions, some of them may have been developed with the intention of just selling stuff to people and selling products to people, but now the same tools that can be used to sell me something I don't really need mm -hmm. can now be used to sell me a politician I really don't need or an ideology that I really don't need. It's the same tool, it's the same hacking the human animal and manipulating what's happening inside. This is now where the, 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 the big question mark is. Is it still true in a world where we have the technology 
to hack human beings and manipulate them like never before, that the customer is always right, that the voter knows best? Or um, have we gone past this point? And we can know, I mean, and, and, the, and the, the simple ultimate answer that, well, this is what people want and, and, and they know what's good for them, maybe it's no longer the case. My concern is to what extent we can trust the voice of, of people, to, to what extent I can trust my voice. Like I'm, we have this picture of the world that I have this voice inside me which tells me what is right and what is wrong. And the more I'm able to express this voice in the outside world and influence what's happening, and the more people can express their voices, it's, it's better, it's more democratic. But what happens if at the same time that more people can express their voices, it's also easier to manipulate your inner voice to what extent you can really trust that the thought that just pop up, popped up in your mind is the result of some free will and not the result of an extremely uh, uh, powerful algorithm that understands what's happening inside you and knows how to push the buttons and press the levers and is serving some external entity and it has planted this thought or this desire that you now express. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm asking this about myself, to what extent I can trust my own inner voice and you know I, I spend two hours meditating every day and I go on these long meditation retreats. Mm -hmm. And my main takeaway from that is it's craziness inside there. And it's so complicated. And the, 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 the simple naive belief that the thought that pops up in my mind, this is my free will, this, is, this was never the case. But if, say, a thousand years ago, the battles inside were mostly between, you know, neurons and biochemicals and childhood memories and, and, and all that. Increasingly, you have external actors going under your skin and into, into your brain and into your mind. And how do I trust that my amygdala is not a Russian agent now? How do I know? The, the more we understand about the extremely complex world inside us, the less easy it is to simply trust what this inner voice is, is, is telling, is saying. Yeah, I, I understand the, the point that you're making. As one of the people who's running a company that develops ranking systems to try to help show people content that's going to be interested mm -hmm. to them, um, I, there's a dissonance between the way that you're explaining what you think is possible mm -hmm. and what I see as a, as a, as, as a practitioner building this. Mm -hmm. I think you can build systems that can get good at, at, at a very specific thing, right? At, at helping to um, you know, understand which of your friends you care the most about so you can rank their content mm -hmm. higher in newsfeed. But the idea that there's some kind of generalized um, AI that's a monolithic thing that understands all dimensions of, 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 of who you are um, in, in a way that's, that's deeper than you do, um, I think doesn't exist and is probably quite far off from existing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's certainly abuse of the systems that I think needs to be, um, th that, I, that I think is more of a policy and values question, which is, you know, on, on Facebook, you know, you're supposed to be your, your real identity. So if you have... Um, you know, to use your example, um, Russian agents or folks from the, the, the government, um, the IRA, who are posing as someone else and, and saying something, mm -hmm. um, and you see that content, but you think it's coming from someone else, then that's not an algorithm I issue. I mean, that's, um, that's someone abusing the system and taking advantage of the fact that you trust that on, on, on this platform, um, someone is generally gonna be who they say they are. So you can trust that the information is coming from someplace and, and kind of slipping in the back door that way. And that's the thing that we certainly need to go fight. Um, but I, I don't know, as, as, a broad, as, as a broad matter, I do think that there's this question of um, you know, to what degree are the systems, and this kind of brings it full circle to where we started on, mm -hmm. on is it fragmentation or is it personalization? Um, is, you know, is, is the content that you see, um, it, if it resonates, 
is that because it actually just more matches your interests? Or is it because you're being incepted and convinced of something that you don't actually believe and doesn't and is dissonant with your your interests and your beliefs? And certainly all the psychological research that 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 I that I've seen and, and the experience that that we've had is that when people see things that don't match um, what what they believe, they just ignore it. Mm-hmm. Right? So um, so certainly there's there's a um, there can be an evolution that happens where you know a system shows um, information that you're going to be interested in, and um, and if that's not managed well, um, that can uh, that has the risk of pushing you down a path towards um, adopting a more extreme position or mm-hmm. evolving the way you think about it over time. Uh, but but I think most of the the content it resonates with people because it resonates with their lived experience, and to the extent that people are abusing that. Um, and, and either trying to represent that there's someone who they're not or trying to um, take advantage of a bug in, in human psychology where mm-hmm. we might be more prone to, to, to an, an extremist idea. That's our job in, in either policing the platform, working with governments and, 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 um, and different agencies, um, and making sure that we design our systems and our recommendation systems to, to not uh, be promoting things that people might engage with in the near term, but over the long term will regret and resent us for, for having done that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's, it's in our interest to get that right. And, um, and, and for a while, I think we didn't understand the depth of some of the problems and challenges that we face there. Um, and there's certainly still a lot more to do. And when you're up against nation states, I mean, they're very sophisticated. Mm-hmm. So they're going to keep on evolving their tactics. But, um, but the thing that I would that I think is really important is that the fundamental design of the systems, I do think, and our incentives are aligned um, with, with helping people um, connect with the people they want, have meaningful interactions, not just getting people to, to watch a bunch of content that they're going to resent later that they did that, um, and, and certainly not making people have, have more extreme or negative viewpoints um, than, than, than what they actually believe. Mm-hmm. So. 